guys thought I would do a video today. I wanted to do it sooner, but I'm not used to making them. Kind of takes a while to put me into that mindset. Okay, let's shoot a video. But I want to make videos because I just love YouTube. I do. I don't watch TV. I watch YouTube. So I want to make my own content. And I think I can record some things that might be interesting to you. It might not be. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going with the flow. But today, today I'm gonna be packaging some orders. Next time I'll do a video about creating the kit, the designs or whatever. If you have some suggestions as well, what do you want to see? Let me know because I'm not sure. I uh, don't feel very inspired in making videos. <laughs> today I'm gonna be packaging kits, making them and then packaging them because I make them to I make them to order. And so I thought maybe I'll give you some tips of the ways I do that. Well, I've done shop updates three times already. Doesn't sound like a lot of experience, but it is to me. And every time I do a shop update, I realize new ways of making the products and packaging, packaging, packing and packaging and packaging them. So maybe I'll have some tips for you. But well, I can tell you that it's a lot easier to make the products now takes me a lot less time and hopefully if you have some tips for me you can put them in the comments as well because I would like to know I want to make this quick you know get as much buck for my time is that how you say it I don't know yeah so let's do this okay so something I've been struggling with is that I bought yeah I bought these boxes for this mega bundle kit they're a bit um well not a bit they're a lot thicker than these because these are large letter boxes so they go as a letter and these are small parcel ones so they're a bit more expensive to ship but i made like a mega bundle of all the magnets i designed for peach stover because i've done peach stover this year i sold a few of them i wasn't expecting people to buy them because i thought well this might be a just a little bit too expensive but the problem let me get there the problem is they don't fit because i packaged them in like five or six magnet bundles but because they are a little bit thick where the yarn is because there's a lot more yarn in these ones than the single magnet ones they don't all fit inside the box so i think i'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to fix it somehow. Maybe try to have the the yarn lay a bit flatter because it's all like chucked in there. Let's see how I can if I can come up with something because I would love to have them all there somewhere, some way, like there inside. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, let's see. Well, I took them all out of their sleeves, and there's six in this box, and they all fit in there, and I'm sure that will fit underneath all of them so oh that's a lot nicer i want to put a, like some kind of indication that this this thread card is a part of this this pattern because they all have the right quantities to make each one seeing they have different colors so they need to be identified for each one of them uh so i need to print something out and either put it in the front or in the back and then i want to print like a cover for here with all the designs so i might do that now i'm gonna design that right now because i already have something like that which is the photo of the listing let me show you so i want to print that out without the discount there of course but i'm gonna leave the 31 magnet kit yeah i'll do that now made myself a little coffee so i've done a cover for the the box itself it has all 31 designs i just printed it on stock paper and put some double-sided tape in the corners so before i had done the patterns like this the cover on the front and then the pattern on the back but now that i'm not wrapping them individually I don't think we need the cover and we can just imagine this side is the pattern right we can just print them double-sided like that so this pattern for this design for these designs will be on this side and then for these designs will be the pattern on this side so 
I only have to print on three pieces of paper instead of six, so that will save some paper. And before I was also putting one how to stitch card in each one of the five magnet bundles because I was sending six magnet bundles to make all the 31 but now I'm just putting one how to stitch card because you don't need this six times doesn't make sense it will be kind of like this you know all the patterns are here three pieces of paper of patterns and then the how to stitch card it will go inside a sleeve with all the plastic canvases there's six plastic canvases cut to size and I want to put it in a sleeve just so it stays in one place it doesn't like move around inside the box but this way we are saving on plastic as well so it'll go like that just inside the box I'm also going to print another thread card which will have the image right there of which patterns these covers belong to so correspond to so it'll be easier for the person who is stitching to just grab this one start with one pattern sheet and then go from there it's a little tight but this is a really sturdy box so it works oh i'm really happy with this yes so this is what the thread cards are going to look like in each of them there is corresponding patterns so yeah, I'm printing them all together right now. Then I'm gonna cut the borders out, put all the thread in these. For each kit, I need to print a cover, a pattern, and a thread card. The kits also contain a how to stitch guide, but that one I'll print at the end once I know how many of them I need because they're all they are all the same file. I look for their reference number and I write it down on paper. As soon as I jump any order, I select the ones I wrote down already. I forgot to mention that all the files for the cover, the thread cards and the patterns have the same name as the reference number on the Etsy listings. So I just finished my list with how many of each do I have, I have to print. I'm just gonna go crazy printing them and I'm gonna be watching a Bella Fiori video meanwhile because it's quite a boring task to print all of these. It takes quite a while. So she I bought this really heavy duty exato knife uh, and it's made for like builders so I think it cuts through cardboard it cuts through those tiny baseboards you know Instead of cutting through one stock card at a time, I cut through about five through this whole stack. Maybe I could even cut through all of them. Let's try that. I have to, to go through the same side a couple times, but that's fine. So one side is done. There we go. Bunch of them at the same time. Well, not really, but kind of nice not to having to cut one at a time which I was doing before and didn't make sense so I'm telling you that now because I'm sure some of you are doing the same as I did just get one of these they're really good they're, uh, if you're in the UK this one is from Wilco it's the Wilco brand by the way and it comes with extra blades and they last a really long time I haven't changed one I'm, I've just been like uh, breaking them, breaking the little sections out every time I have a shop update because they go dull. They last a long time. To punching out holes in each color. So what I was thinking I'm gonna do next time is put a little watermarks that are not very noticeable on each card. So when I want to identify which card belongs to each kit, it will be easier because it's written, written on there. So I'll just write the, the SKU number and I don't have to keep them in order anymore if I don't want to. So I've already packaged all the kits for the Mega Bundles. I didn't package the kits, I packaged the thread cards. And that one, that one, and this one. And I've also made the thread cards for the other single kits. 
with this one and now I have to cut all the plastic canvases so the thing you embroider onto or stitch onto I'm still waiting on some magnets that are coming today and this is what I want to show you this is how I make the process of cutting the, the plastic canvas much quicker so for each, for each product I have online I have numbers the SKU numbers for them. Is there this number 21? So I will just come here and look for number 21. It's 21 here. And these four dots represent the size of the plastic canvas. So if I just align it to the holes on the plastic canvas, I have the size so I can just snip there, snip there and then cut straight with the scissors. Then I put a uh, glue dot in the middle and I put the canvas the way it's supposed to be stitched. So for this one, the longest part should be vertical. This way up just gives the person who bought the kit a little reminder that they need to stitch this way up. Because otherwise, if I just threw it in here, the person could start stitching it on, in this orientation and that would be a problem because then they wouldn't have enough sp space to stitch the whole pin or magnet then I close it straight away just so I don't mix up so I just make these cards because if I were to count every single stitch because they all have different sizes right so this strawberry bunny is like 25 by 22 so if I were to count every single time 22 by 25 it'll take me a long time I think you're getting the picture now everything I do I try to make it I try to do it in uh, batches if i'm cutting canvas i'll cut canvas for all of them if i'm putting the thread in the thread cards i'll do that for all of them and what i'm gonna do now is cut tiny pieces of washi tape i need four of them so i'll cut four of them and another thing i figured out is when you cut washi tape in a mat if you cut it all the way like from top to bottom you have to then go with your fingernails in there and try to take it out but i cut it just a little bit off the top so i don't cut all the way to the top and that way a little bit will lift up i don't know if you can see that i hope so yeah you can see that so it's easier to pick up it's all those tiny details that will make it faster for this one so all of them will take a needle and a magnet and a magnet and then that goes on the side for me to put the, the thread in so another way I found that I can save time is by having the same symbols in all of my patterns for the specific covers. So every single cover has a specific symbol. And up there, I have most of my kits are up here. The new ones are missing. I have to put new sheets there. But all of them have the quantities of each cover that goes into each kit. They are the same symbols. I have this wall of yarn. I just have some hooks that I bought from Amazon, they're sticky hooks and I put all my thread in there so when I need a thread I'll just pull one out like this so like that just comes out and for example if I needed a thread for that one it was just one, I'll put it in there on the side of each thread there's a, a legend so it goes from up to down and this one corresponds to this color this one to that color and so on and so forth so if I have some doubts of what symbol belongs to what color I can just check the legend and they all have the same kind of legend on the side when I'm packaging here it's kind of all enriched so I package here while I'm looking at that and then to my left I just grab the yarn with my left hand and put it onto that also so i use the this yarn hook it fits nicely inside the holes that are punched out so i'm gonna do this one first it uses three of the dark purple which is the outline so i just got i got it from my left side i put the hook through the the hole and we'll put it around the yarn like that with the yarn folded in half pull it through and then I just hook it on the, the yarn and pull it through the fold right there. There's a nice knot there.
After making the kits, I hand write all the thank you cards and I like to build all the boxes and write the name or the other order number on them. I try to keep them in order so that when I'm reaching out for the next box on the order list, it will be easy to find. And I always try to draw a little thank you doodle on the back of the parcels because I like it when other shops do that. Putting the kits into the boxes is the easiest part and I fly through this stage. To keep the mistakes to a minimum, I don't tape shut the boxes or envelopes straight away. Instead, I leave the closing and taping for the final step so I can check their contents all over again when I'm inserting the weight and sizes of the boxes in the postage details. I'm looking forward to Christmas because my husband is going to gift me a label printer and I won't have to cut and tape shipping labels ever again. It's going to be a wonderful time saver. And I could possibly also print logo stickers to put them outside the boxes, so that would be great. The last step is getting the tape gun out and going ham on these boxes. I'm deathly afraid they will arrive open to their houses, so I don't even trust the self-closing envelopes. I'm lucky to live in the city center, so I have a bunch of post boxes close by, and I don't usually have to wait in line at the post office. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you liked it, and I'll see you next time. Subscribe!